All right, so le let's look at uh, our example again. And so here is the um, the differential equation that we just solved. All right, and then um, the um, method of variation of parameters is to look for the answer in the form where the right hand side is a combination of solutions of the corresponding homogeneous differential equation with um, um, coefficients that depend on t. Right? And then after um, a, a long and uh, calculation that involved several very clever tricks, we, we got the final answer. Right? So, um, I mean, of course we did it for a particular uh, case, but you can, uh, I guess you can easily see that this uh, whole logic can be generalized to I mean, I mean, it, it just generalizes without um, literally any change to, um, to solve a general non-homogeneous differential equation. So uh, what what we what we need to, to to have here is that if we want to s to find a particular solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation, we need to know the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation, and then uh, we look for a particular solution in the in, th in this form, and then. Um, uh, th th there's going to be two equations on this uh, e1 and e2. The, the first equation comes from from a trick that that we invented to simplify um, the computation, and the second equation uh, is substituting um, this big y of t into the differential equation. Um, but after uh, uh, all simplifications, we got just algebraic equations in u1 prime and u2 prime and uh, the determinant of the system is exactly the wrong scan and then uh, uh, we can uh, apply Kramer's rule to to find the final answer and here is the final answer so now of course when you uh, do this in practice you, you don't really have to go through all the steps again so you can just uh, use the final answer namely what you do is you use this equation so you just write that uh, the particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation is uh, written in this form where u1 and u2 are given by these two formula okay uh, so let's wrap up again um, in today's lecture, we uh, learned how to solve a homogeneous linear second-order differential equation with constant coefficients. I mean, we finished uh, all um, all the cases. To do all the cases, we set up the characteristic equation, which is an algebraic equation, uh, just a quadratic equation. Then we solve it, and uh, the discriminant can be either positive. So then the solution. There are two distinct real roots, and then uh, both of them they uh, appear as exponents uh, in the solution and then if the discriminant is zero it means that the characteristic equation has a repeated root uh, so then it appears in the exponent but also the uh, second solution is t times the same exponential function so and then finally uh, the discriminant could be zero so then we have two distinct complex roots and then the general solution um, is formed as follows I it is a combination um, of cosine and sine and inside cosine and sine we have the imaginary part of the complex roots and times the exponential function and then in the exponent we have the um, the real part uh, of the complex roots all right and then um, if we have a non-homogeneous differential equation then is general solution um, is any particular solution plus the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. Uh, so thi this is just exactly the same as in linear algebra one. Well, and, and finally, if we want to, uh, if we want to solve it, well, then the biggest problem here um, is to find. Well, I guess I'm not sure if the biggest problem. I, I guess it depends. But uh, if we know the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation then the method of undetermined coefficients tells us how to find um, a particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation and here is how so first you, you write it as a combination of 
um, uh, solutions of the homogeneous equation with uh, coefficients that are functions of t and they can be found uh, using this which is the, the method of undetermined uh, coefficients.